Energy healing is real because energy is more effective in controlling biology than molecules are. And that's according to physics. So the bottom line is we have ignored the role of energy because conventional medicine is locked back in a pre-1925 version of physics. But in 1925, when quantum physics came in, it says you must include the energy in the equation. Now the question is this. I have a cell, and I know the behavior of the cell is elicited by the receptors that read the signals. Here's this beautiful understanding, because this is what simplifies my understanding about how it all works, and then it, I applied it to my life, and it made such beautiful uh, changes in my life. And it works like this. I used to clone human cells. And when I put them in the culture dishes, I'd observe their behavior and do things. And one of the things that's very interesting, if I put a cell in the culture dish when I started, and the cell is here, and I put food over here, when I start the experiment, I put the food over there and the cell's over here. When I come back a little later, where do you think the cell is? The cell moves toward the food, right? Okay. Experiment number two. I put the cell over here at the start of the experiment, and I put toxin in over here. And I come back in a few minutes later, where's the cell going to be? Over here. Look, this is so beautiful because here's the truth. At the level of the cells of which we are based, there's only three behaviors a cell can do, uh, uh, you know, uh, obvious behaviors that you can see. And the, here are the three behaviors. The cell can move toward a signal. The cell can move away from a signal. And the third one is actually a signal can be made in the environment, but the cell ignores it because it's not relevant. So that's actually three different movements, moving forwards, moving backwards or not moving at all. Does that, does that make sense? I mean, you can see it, right? So here's the issue. Then the behavior of the cell is actually divided into two kinds of behavior. When a signal is presented that the cell needs for its maintenance and its growth, the cell will always move toward the signal. When the cell is presented with a signal that threatens its life, then the cell will move away from the signal. So there's only two behaviors. What are they? Moving forward is growth, and moving backwards is protection. So the bottom line is this point. This, now look at the logic, because this is the part that's like profound but simple. A cell moves forward for growth, moves backwards for protection. Can a cell move forwards and backwards at the same time? Yes or no? No. no. Point. Fundamental, profound nature of the point. The cells in your body are digital. When they receive signals that say growth, they will move toward things in growth. But if they're not receiving growth, then they will move backwards in protection. And the point about it is this. Then the cells in your body are going back and forth between growth and protection based on what? The perception of the environment. But since the cells are in the community, they're also the perception of the brain. So as you're thinking, what are you doing to the cells? You're giving them information about their environment. If you think that, oh my God, I can't make it through this lecture because the damn projector broke. Oh my God, where do you think my cells are going? Oh, Bruce, oh, Bruce. You know, like they're hiding out. On the other hand, it's like, cool, we can make anything. We can do anything. We can survive. And what are the cells going to do? Well, they're not going to shirk backwards. They're going to move forwards in growth. Why is this relevant? Because the behavior is that clearly digitized that it's one or the other. And the point is this, although you have 100,000 different gene programs minimum, I can take all the gene programs in your body and divide them into two groups. Those genes that provide for growth and reproduction, and let me explain what I mean by growth. Growth is not just from a baby to an adult. You are growing every day, why? Because every day you're losing thousands, millions, trillions of cells a day. And if you don't replace those cells, what's going to happen to your body? You're going to de experience disease and death. And so the bottom line is this. Then for you to survive on a day-to-day -day basis just to keep level, you're growing all the time. And that's a requirement of the system. So the fact is this. Growth goes on, and it keeps you healthy and alive. And then the issue is this. Once you reach a certain age, then the genes, there are also genes for, for growth, but growth of the next generation. So you, the growth genes are for you or for the next generation. So those are growth genes, okay? On the other hand, growth, as I said, is only when the cells are moving forwards. But when cells are moving backwards, they exercise protection programs. So there's another set of genes in your body, or your cells, which are involved with your protection. But the point about it is this. A cell at any one time is either in growth or it's in protection, but it can't be in both. Now, I've got to ask you a simple question, and it's economics. 
Does it take energy to grow? Does it take energy to protect yourself? Well, then the point about it becomes very simple because here's the point. When you find that you are in protection, you have to use energy. But the more protection you're in, the more energy you use. Well, where are you getting the energy from? You have a balance. You have like a checking account in your body of energy to run this body. And the more checks you write for protection, what happens to the balance? It gets less and less. And there's a point where so much protection is used that you actually now short growth processes. And this is true for like the nation right now. Right now, our budget has an excess of 50% of the U.S. budget is in protection. What does that mean? Well, all that money that's allocated for protection is not helping us grow or maintain the country in any way because that's all put in the armaments and whatever they are. And the issue is this applies to your own body. When you walk out on the street, when you wake up in the morning and you start to live, you're vacillating between growth and protection. And the issue about it is the more protection you require or you perceive you require, and that's, that's the trick, the one that says you think you need protection, the more you put into that, the less growth you start to accommodate. And here's an interesting part. You could be so afraid, you can be scared to death. And that's the truth. The truth is this, that fear can be so great that you absolutely shut off growth so quickly that you actually die right at that moment. And the reality is, understand the balance of your health is related to the amount of energy expenditure you're putting into protection. So the bottom line, survival is actually equal to growth divided by protection. And now look at this. Turn on the news, read the newspaper, listen to the, to the TV. What do you hear every day? More reasons to protect yourself. Well, the air is not good. The water is not good. The food's not good. These people are unsafe. These, every time you turn around, what are you doing? You're walling yourself off more and more. Why? Because growth means to go forwards. What is protection? Go backwards or wall off the outside. We start to isolate when we start to become fear-bound. And as we become fear-bound, we shut down growth as a natural biological mechanism. But it's interesting. I have 50 trillion cells. Each cell can be in growth or protection. But my whole body doesn't have to be in growth and protection, so I can have a range. My body can be in, so many cells are in growth, so many in protection, so I can have a percent. So when I look at the human uh, system, I also recognize that growth and protection is a variable, okay? And here's the interesting part about it. When I'm growing, which biological systems in my body am I using for growth? And the answer is all the organs in here called the viscera the heart, the lungs, the digestive system, the liver and pancreas and all these things, these are for growth. When I protect myself, which system do I use? Get out of here, I'll hit you with my lung. No, that's probably not what it is, okay? The point is, when you're in protection, what physiological systems do you use for protection? Muscles and bones. And the interesting thing is, there's a switch in your body that switches from either the viscera or to the muscles and bones. Remember that, that, that thing we call fight or flight? Remember that adrenal system? The adrenal system is a master switch that switches between what? The, the two systems. The switch says, if I start to get into fight or flight, what am I going to use? Muscles and bones. Well, I shut down my viscera in the process. And that way, I have all my energy allocated to get ready to run. If I need to run away from a lion, I'm not going to start processing digestion at lunch. Why? Well, that energy might be the exact energy that it took me to get the last step so my foot doesn't get caught in a lion's mouth. So the system is intelligent. It says, when you're under threat, it will allocate the energy to where the threats are. It shuts off the, the visceral system. So the bottom line is simply this. In growth... The visceral system commands the somatic system. It works like this. In growth, I need water. So my, my body says I need water. Well, how do I get to the water? Oh, well, I move to the water. So how do I do that? Through my skeletal system. Well, who directs it? The viscera says I need water, so the skeletal system responds to the viscera's request. So the viscera administers to the need, I mean, the skeletal system administers to the viscera's need. But here's the interesting thing. My visitor says, Bruce, you need some water. So I say, okay, let's go get some water. So I start to go get some water. And right away, there's that lion right in front of me. And the fact is this, at the moment I see the lion, well, what do you think I'm going to do? Still go get the water? Nah. Really, at that point, my somatic system says, the hell with the water, we're running. So what's going to happen is I suppress the viscera 
when I activate the somatic system. And the point is, they're, they're bound to each other. It's called the autonomic nervous system, sympathetic, parasympathetic for the words. But the fact is what? One pushes the blood into the, to the skeletal system, and the other pushes the blood into the visceral system because the blood is nourishing it. So the bottom line is that humans are different in, than the individual cells because we have this graded effect. And here's the beautiful part about it. And you know this. Love is the maximum nourishment for growth. When you're in love, you will run to that place wherever it is. You have to go over the mountain or through the mountain. You will be attracted to it so much. Why? Because love provides a whole system, the, all the hormones and connections of the system to do what? Provide for your growth and your maintenance and your health. However, the moment you get in fear, then what do you have to do? You back away, you wall yourself off, you separate from the environment, and the consequence is this. Protection from the environment cuts you off from the environment. Cutting yourself off from the environment cuts you off from life. Now, the issue is very interestingly revealed, especially in uh, kids in Eastern Europe where they have the, so many orphanages. I always thought that these kids in Eastern Europe were in the orphanage because all the war is going on over there. It turns out that's not true. The kids are in the orphanages because the parents are still having babies because of whatever their religious beliefs are and they can't maintain them so orphanages are dumping sites for kids that parents can't maintain not because they don't have parents and it turns out in the studies on these kids virtually the largest percentage over 80 percent of them become autistic what is an autistic child a child that doesn't respond to the outside why because in, in the protection required to survive the child walls itself off and as a result, look at the pathology that results. These kids do not interact with our lives because they put a barrier between them and the outside world. But what else happens to them? Every growth parameter is reduced by from 30 to 40 percent or more. Their size, their height, their physiology. Why? Not getting love is losing the nourishment. Not getting the love means that if you're not getting love and support, then you're also then trying to protect yourself. In the absence of love is fear. And the result is fear will shut off your system. And I'll explain exactly how that happens in the human. There's a master switch. Every one of us is affected by it. The system in medicine is called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. It affects every one of us. And it works like this. Stress is something that's perceived by the brain. Remember perception. <laughs> If I think of a signal as this is a scary signal, then it's stressful to me. Well, the issue is this. If I'm in growth, I go out and move forward toward it. But when I start to see stress, I have to protect myself. So the body gets, from the signal that the brain says, okay, mobilize the body for what? Growth or protection under stress? Protection. Well, how do you do that? And here's the answer. That the signal goes from the brain to the pituitary gland. Remember pituitary gland? Even you got that in high school. What is the, 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 the common name of the pituitary gland? The master gland. What does it mean? It's the gland whose function shapes the rest of this. So the brain says to the master gland, growth or protection. When the stress level is up, the master gland is given the, the signal to set up the body in the protection. So what happens is the uh, pituitary gland releases ACTH, which is a hormone that goes to the adrenal glands, which are on top of the kidneys. The adrenal glands secrete what? The adrenergic hormones, adrenaline. What's adrenaline for? Fight or flight. Now here's the interesting point. When the master gland says stress, what am I going to be in growth or protection? Okay, now here's what happens. The hormones of the adrenal gland squeeze or constrict the blood vessels in the viscera. And what they do is they force the blood from the viscera to go to the arms and the legs. Why would it do that? Think about why. Because you've got to run. So you've got to nourish the muscles. Well, the thing is, it preferentially puts blood into the, into the arms and legs. Well, the question is, if it preferentially put the blood into the arms and the legs, where was the blood before it was in the arms and legs? In the viscera. What's the function of the blood in the viscera? What functions? Growth. So when I get scared, what's the first thing that happens? I take the blood from here and push it out to here. Why? Because I've got to run and move and fight or flight or whatever it is I'm going to do. Well, the point is this. As soon as I got stressed, I shut down my growth mechanisms. 
The more stress you're under, the more chronically you suppress the growth mechanism. It's not, it's not a conscious decision. It's a part of the system called the HPA, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The significance of it is that the releasing of the glucocorticoids and adrenaline cause a fight or flight response. Well, here's an interesting point. Okay, do, did you get this right away? That under stress, the chemistry of the body causes the blood to go from the gut region into the arms. Does that make sense? Okay, and it makes sense then, if I don't have the blood in the gut, then the function of the gut is reduced. And that's what happens. But here's the other thing. Now think about this one, because this is like a, another adding an insult to an injury issue. And it goes like this. My immune system is a very expensive organ system to run. It costs a lot of body energy to run. It's a very high energy usage. If I am trying to protect myself from something that threatens me on the outside, do I use my immune system for that job, yes or no? What's the immune system function? Protection on the inside, so if bacteria or viruses get in me, okay? So here's the point. I start to see the lion. I get the release of the adrenaline and the glucocorticoids. The blood is running into my arms and legs so I could run away from the lion. What do you think happens to my immune system? Do I increase its function or decrease its function? Decrease it, and in fact, the same hormones, this is the point, the same hormones in stress are used by the medical profession to shut off the immune system in people who receive uh, transplants of organs and tissues. Why? Because I don't want to reject them. So how do I regulate the immune system? Well, I give them these hormones. But what hormones are these? These are the hormones from stress. So it says, okay, you're not receiving a, a, a graft of an organ or a tissue, but you're under stress. What happens to your immune system? It shuts down. And the reason why it does that is conservation of energy because I'm dealing with the external environment as the source of the threat. Well, you know this as well as I know this. When you get stressed, whether it's at school or at work, when the stress levels get real high, that's when you get sick. Why? Because when the stress levels got real high, that's when you also shut off your immune system. Important point about it is this. Then people say, well, I caught a cold. I caught something. The new, the, the, not new, it's actually, it, it's been a long-standing understanding in medicine already, is this. Everyone in this audience is already infected with almost all the common pathogens in humans right now. They're in your blood. I can take a sample of your blood right now, and I'll show you the bacteria and viruses that live in your blood. And you say, but Bruce, I'm not unhealthy. I'm pretty damn healthy. Look at me. So what are you talking about? I'm infected. And see what the name of the organisms are given as a group. They're called opportunistic organisms. What does it mean? It means that they live in your body, but they can't thrive. They can't thrive when you're in health. When you're in health, your physiology is like in a perfect balance. It doesn't support these organisms. But the moment you get stressed, you start to shut down the immune system, and you change the physiology of your body, then these organisms take the advantage. That's why they're called opportunities. That they were there all the time, but they can only express themselves when you're in a weakened state. When do you get in a weakened state? When you're under stress. So all of a sudden you start to get sick. You didn't necessarily catch it. You already got it. So the issue was this. What do you need to do to stay healthy? Regulate the stress.